Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Klein from the Department of Communication at the University of Missouri. Welcome to the latest in a series of online video lessons intended to provide you important principles and helpful methods for rhetorical criticism. In this video, we're going to take a look at how language operates as symbolic communication. We'll look at how language can construct meaning in ways that can both bring people together with a shared understanding, as well as drive people apart with differences of opinion and even conflicts regarding what certain language means. And ultimately, we'll look at how language exerts social, cultural, and even political power through the development and maintenance of ideology. Here's how we'll proceed in part one. First, we need to review a couple of important theoretical concepts from earlier videos in this series to remind ourselves how symbols work to construct meaning. Then what we're going to do in this video is to take a look at two important levels of meaning that language operates with, denotation and connotation. And finally, we want to illustrate with an example not just how connotative meaning can be used to bring communities together with a language that enables us to share meaning, but also how the same language, the same symbol set, can be used as a potential source of conflict. But first, let's remind ourselves how does language operate in terms of symbolic communication? When we think about words, we want to think about them, as we do in semiotic theory, as signs. A sign is something we directly encounter, but refers to something else. In other words, a sign represents something else, some other form of reality, be it an object, a person, an event, or an abstract concept. A symbol is a sign with no natural connection to its referent. There's no reason that a word absolutely must naturally mean what it means. The only reason a word means anything is an arbitrary social convention. Words mean something essentially because the community of people who share the same symbol set, who share the same language, will decide and agree that this is going to be what it means. Now, this is going to be an important concept to remember because what symbols mean is something that is a fluid and dynamic thing in social interaction. The meanings of symbols can change, and the meanings of symbols can also be internally complex, multiple, and sometimes even in contradiction or conflict with one another. But how is it that symbols actually mean what they mean? To understand this, let's go to a simple but helpful theory we talked about in a previous video, Ogden and Richard's semantic triangle. This model provides the interaction of three important elements anytime something is being represented through symbolic communication. First, we have our sign, the representation of some reality. Then we have the reference. This is the reality that's being represented. And what makes both signs and reference make sense for us is what Ogden and Richards refer to as the reference. These are the things that exist in our minds both individually as well as socially and culturally as a collective. The past knowledge and experiences, beliefs, values, priorities, all kinds of things that exist in our mind whenever we perceive and interpret things in our day-to-day -day lives. So the reference is going to be really important to help us understand the meaning that we attach to signs how we share those meanings together with one another, and how we actually engage in conflict over what signs actually mean. But this, of course, leaves us with an important question. Why is it that the meanings of words, or indeed any symbols, have political importance? Murray Edelman wrote Constructing the Political Spectacle, and he said the following, it is language about political events and developments that people experience. Even events that they are close to take their meaning from the language used to depict them. So political language is political reality. There is no other so far as the meaning of events to actor and spectators is concerned. Now remember when we're talking about politics, Sometimes we are talking about objective reality, tangible things that you can see, you can hold in your hand, you can count and measure. But we're also often talking about important abstractions, things like the values that attach to politics, like freedom, equality, opportunity. We're talking about other kinds of abstract concepts with regard to how political things function. Ideas such as democracy or authoritarianism. These aren't tangible material realities, they're concepts. And so the way in which we engage in this kind of politics is through communication, through the use of symbols and language. That's what Edelman means by political language is political reality. So if the meaning of symbols carries political importance, we need to have a better understanding of how symbols carry meaning. Now, particularly when we're talking about words as symbols, there's two important levels of meaning that we can think about, denotation, and connotation. 
Denotation, otherwise known as denotative meaning, is the direct, literal, official, if you will, meaning of a symbol. If you go into a dictionary and you look up what a word means, that's the denotative meaning. The idea is to provide a specific meaning for that word in a language that everyone who speaks and reads that language can understand and agree to this is what it means. Now, of course, we can already see signs of ambiguity, right? How many times have you looked up the definition to a word in a dictionary and seen two or three or even more entries, right? The same word can have multiple denotative meanings. Things get even more complicated when we move from denotation to connotation. Connotative meaning is the cluster of beliefs, feelings, value positions, and so forth that attach to our experience with a symbol. In terms of the semantic triangle, connotative meaning is all about the reference. What is all the past knowledge and experience and meanings that we've gotten from social interactions with others that help us figure out what things mean beyond the dictionary definition? Let's illustrate with an example that's going to start simple and get complicated pretty quickly. Here's a reference and here is a verbal symbol, a phrase, to help us understand what this object is. American flag. So what does the phrase American flag mean? The phrase American flag is the sign and the referent is this object. If you were to come up with a denotative meaning for what American flag is, what would you come up with? Here's an example. A piece of cloth comprised of colors and design elements intended for display and representing the United States of America. Now, if you provide that denotative meaning, a definition, if you will, this is something that would be relatively simple for us to agree with. This is what the American flag is. However, once we start looking at the semantic triangle, we're going to see that the opportunity for ambiguities and complications start to arise. Here's our sign, the phrase American flag. Here's our reference, this piece of fabric that we talked about. But the reference is going to be where the action is in terms of what the American flag actually means. And I just said the phrase actually means with big, huge quotation marks around it, because this is going to differ not just on the level of individuals, but on the levels of social groups and organizations throughout the United States culture and throughout the world. So let's see how this might operate. When you think about the American flag, what are the connotative meanings? What are the various elements of past knowledge and prior experiences and beliefs and values and so forth? The things in your perceptual matrix that help you figure out what the American flag means to you. Well, we could think about the nation, the United States, these 50 states as a geographical and political entity. The American flag stands for this nation. We could also think about the original 13 states when the country was founded. And indeed, the design of the American flag has both of these meanings in mind. We have the 13 red and white stripes that stand for the original 13 states, but then we have 50 stars on the blue field that stands for the various 50 states we have today collected together in one political union. Now, we don't just think about the nation and leave it at that. We think about lots of other things as well. We think about the various institutions that go into American politics and government. We also think about the various rights that attach to American citizenship that are codified in the Constitution and are part of our political culture. Things like freedom of speech and freedom of religion. We also think about the various social norms and rules and responsibilities that attach to the symbol. From a very young age in United States schools, for instance, most school children learn the Pledge of Allegiance and they learn other kinds of ritual behaviors for how you show honor and respect for the American flag, putting your hand over your heart or removing your hat, for instance. We can also think about the tight connection that's developed all throughout American history between the American flag and the United States military. When we think about our troops in battle, we often think about iconic images, such as the photograph taken at Iwo Jima during World War II. Indeed, our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, talks about the American flag at a time of war when it stayed flying strong even when the battle was over. Now, we can also think about the American flag through the various other social and cultural rituals that it participates in, everything from graduation ceremonies to professional sporting events. So notice that the American flag potentially means all of these things, and they're going to mean these things at different times in different contexts, and these meanings are going to be deployed for a variety of different political reasons. 
you might imagine, for instance, the current controversy that's taking place in the United States regarding NFL professional football players kneeling during the national anthem in protest against police brutality against African Americans. This particular protest has been one that's been amazingly controversial. Many people, including our current president, has attacked these protests as un-American specifically because it's being perceived as disrespectful to the national anthem and the American flag, and subsequently disrespectful to the nation and disrespectful to the American military and our troops that have fought and died to protect the nation. On the other hand, those who participate in this kneeling protest argue that, in fact, they are not disrespecting the American flag and the national anthem, but in fact, they are exercising the rights that that anthem and that flag represent, such as freedom of speech. And so those on both sides of this controversy are using the flag and using the national anthem in order to articulate very different arguments about whether or not this particular form of social protest is justified or not. That is an important political conflict that shows how the ambiguity of meaning within something as seemingly simple as the symbol of the American flag can represent for us. What we ultimately want to pull from this lesson is that the meanings of language are rich, complex, and multiple. Sometimes these meanings are held individually, but most of the time they're shared socially. And this functions not just to bring us together by sharing understanding through the use of sharing the same symbolic language, but also in a way that brings us to misunderstandings and sometimes even political conflict when we have fundamental disagreements about what things mean symbolically and whether and how they can be used to justify or de-justify a particular political position. Language as symbolic meaning has a lot of social, cultural, and political implications, and we'll explore more of those in the next video in this series. For now, if you have any questions about the content of this video or any of the videos in this series, please don't hesitate to reach out by leaving a comment or contacting me directly. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.